Now let's go ahead and make another scene that will live inside our main scene. To do that, you just come up here, click that plus, and this time we're gonna use a special node type called Kinematic Body 2D, which I had that pre-searched, but you just search for Kinematic Body 2D, select that, create it, and this is a new node type that um, has a lot of functionality built into it for moving the, itself around, which we're gonna make a little character on the screen that moves, so this is a good choice for us. I'll go ahead and save this, and I'm gonna call it hero.tscn, save that, and same thing just like we did before, I'm gonna name this node hero. We can use some of the other artwork that we brought in now, so I'll add a child node just like we did before, sprite, um, and I'll drag in our seed character you see him appear on the screen here. Zoom in a little bit. And I'll go ahead and uh, add another child, another sprite. And this one's going to be our shadow. So we'll add our shadow over here, drag it into our texture. And now you see that it appeared at the right spot. This particular asset's cut in the same size as the character, but you can move it around. If you wanted to make it feel like he's levitating or something, you could do that. Um, but if I put him just on the ground now, you see that the shadow is above him, which isn't correct. What we want is to reorder it so that the shadow um, is behind him. So that's kind of like your nice equivalent of Z index kind of thing. Just drag him the order that you want. One of the really cool things about Godot scenes is that you can run them independently. And so before we've been hitting Command B or F5 to run the entire game, which is, you know, starts with that main scene. But you can also hit Command R or F6 on PC and Linux. Uh, to run the scene in isolation. So if I do Command R, uh, right now it looks kind of silly, but Godot is just running an instance of our hero. And just like before, the the positioning is kind of default center and all that. What I can do is uh, take these layers and just move them kind of to the side. Now when I run the scene, you see the whole thing a little bit better. What we want to do is work on this scene individually, and then later we'll use it in that parent world scene. So let's get him to move around a little bit. Just like before, we're going to select hero in the uh, scene tree over here, click this add script button. Again, uh, Godot is going to suggest the name based on the scene, and we'll create this file. Looks just like our one from before, except this time we're extending off Kinematic Body 2D, which gives us some extra functionality. We'll cover that in a second. All we're going to do here is set up a quick pattern for the character to just move from the right to the left and then back. Um, in the future, we'll get into like user input and being able to guide the character around with controls and stuff, of course. But for now, we're just going to start kind of quick and simple and easy. Um, so we'll say first a member variable called uh, direction. And we'll just set that to a string of right. And then we can have a variable for controlling how fast the character moves. So how about uh, speed? I'll just say 60. We're not going to use the ready function this time, so we can just delete it. So what we want to do is move this character a little bit on every frame. Like we saw before, we have this process function. Uh, but when we're using the Godot physics engine, which is what we're going to use to move this character around, uh, we actually want to use a different function for that. There's a different one called physics process. Physics process is the place that you want your character movement. Anything that could potentially cause like collisions and, and to get Godot to do any kind of fancy detection and stuff. We're not really going to need it for this video, but I thought I'd set us up right for the future anyway. Um, so in here, we'll just say direction equals, if it equals right. We do our syntax. So remember, it's colon and then new line. Uh, here's a function that's built into our special kinematic body type um, or kinematic body 2D. Uh, it's called move and slide. What that's going to do is use the uh, Godot's physics engine to move the character around. And then if it ends up hitting anything, which we're not going to have anything in this tutorial, but we'll, we'll add that later. If it ends up hitting anything, it's going to slide off the surface that it hit. Um, and for our case, we're just going to give it one argument here. And that's going to be a new, a new class type called Vector2. Vector2s in Godot are used for 2D math. And they come, it's basically just an XY pair so what we can do is say speed for our x which is going to be the first thing that goes in here and then just zero to keep the movement uh, the second one here would be the vertical movement but we're just going to keep it moving from left to right vector twos come with all kinds of other cool functionality for detecting like distance and paths to certain things which is very handy so what we've got here is if the direction is right we're going to go ahead and move the character uh, by passing in speed which is a positive value uh, into the left part or the X part of our vector two. 
and then we're just going to do the opposite of that. Um, so I'll copy this over if, if we're not right, which will be left. And so to do that, we can just say negative speed. Pretty standard stuff, but uh, X values going positive will move to the right, negative will move to the left. Uh, if we were talking about the vertical axis here, it would be negative values would go up, positive values would go down. I'll go ahead and run this, and we should see our character moving. Yes, he moves. Uh, but he'll never end up coming back to the left. So what we can do is just some quick logic in here. How about uh, if position, here's a built-in thing that we have um, on any node type, I think, at least anything that inherits from the 2D space, you have a position.x and a position.y. So we'll say if position.x is greater than 200, like if you've navigated that far. Um, and in Godot, you, in Godot, you can use the double and ampersand character, and that works fine. Um, sometimes it's just nice and more readable if you just type the word and. I've been doing that more lately. So and direction equals right. Also, no, there's no concept of like double equals or triple equals. It's just double equals, which is probably how JavaScript should be, but um, it's whatever. Uh, so if if the position is greater than 200 and direction is right, what we're going to do is flip the direction. So now how about direction equals left? And we'll do kind of the opposite idea here. So if position.x is less than 100, I'm just kind of making these values up, and direction is left, then uh, direction equals right. So what this is going to do is, um, not the greatest code ever, but it's just going to flip back and forth between going left and going right. So I'll run the scene by itself. Uh-oh, we have an error. Oh, it's a typo. Yeah. Once again, you have to spell stuff right or code doesn't work. Now we run the scene and see that our character will bounce back and forth. Now I'm going to go back and undo some of the offsetting I did. So if I go back to our 2D editor, if you remember, just so we could see it for our tutorial purposes, I kind of dragged the character over away from the top left corner. Um, what I'm going to do is actually come in, inspect um, either layer here. I need to do both of them. So I'll inspect the sprite, toggle open this transform section here. And now you see the exact values that we dragged and moved the default position of the scene. What I'm going to do is uh, just reset that to zero. So it's cool that you can drag it around to set these with the mouse, but sometimes you need that perfect precision. So you can just type the values into the boxes. I'll come and do that for the shadow too. And we're going to leave both of them on centered. Now let's use this hero scene that we've created um, in our actual world map. So what we'll do is go back to our world map scene. And there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is that you can come up here and just right click. So far we've been adding new kind of vanilla nodes to our scene, but you can also do what's called instance child scene, which is adding an instance of a different scene we've created. So in here I can choose that and then choose the scene we want to place, which is a hero. And so now in here by default on the top left, uh, we have this hero scene that's like already in the tree ready to go and we can move them anywhere we want. And then if we boot up the game, again, booting up the world map this time, there's an instance of our hero in here. Having like sub scenes baked into the tree like this sometimes is appropriate, uh, but you can also dynamically place these instances with code. To cover that, let's just undo what we did. So we'll delete the node. And going back to our world map script, you can just click the little script icon here, or you can go to the script here and pull it up in the menu. I'm gonna undo all this nonsense again. So we're just stuck with our ready. Just left with our ready, I suppose. And in here, what we're gonna do is load up an instance of our hero. So I'll say hero equals load, which is a special function in Godot. And in load, you give a reference to the resource path. So if you look right here, we have um, our resource project directory, a close sprites. Right under here, there's a reference um, hero.tscn. And usually there's autocomplete, but something with my setup broke when I upgraded to uh, this version of Godot. So I don't know what's up with that, but um, hero.tscn. And so that'll like go fetch the data for this thing. And right after that, you can say dot instance. And that'll create a new instance of a hero scene. To actually add it to the scene though, we use a special function called add child. And then we can just pop in our hero. 
And so now uh, when we boot up the game, this ready function will fire. We'll grab a new instance of the hero and then place it in the scene, so running the game. And now you see it, it works, but he's all the way at the top left. And so oftentimes maybe you're like spawning enemies, maybe you're dynamically creating item drops or something like that. You wanna set the position of the thing where it should go. And so here we have our hero, we haven't placed it yet, but what we can do before we place it is go in and edit the position. So set position, we use our friend vector two again. Again, that's just gonna be like an X, Y coordinate. And then I'm just kind of making this up, but how about 150 and 80? Uh, so 150 pixels from the left and then 80 from the top. And now when we boot up the game, we should see the hero in the ish middle. There we go, close enough. One final thing I want to point out in this first video is that Godot has a concept of hot loading. Um, and so what hot loading is, it's like you make a change and then the change is reflected right there in the game without you having to stop the game and reboot it. That can be a serious drag on your workflow. So in here, if I go to the visual editor and I just change something, like I grab the shadow and pull it down without, I didn't stop the game, I just minimized it. Now you see that the changes I made are automatically reflected in the scene. This works really well for visual things like this shadow edit, sprite edit I just made. It can be great for tweaking UI so you don't have, you can get it just right without having to like shut the game down and boot it up every time. It can also work for code. So if you change something in a loop, for example, like the game step loop, um, as soon as you hit save, your changes will be there and you don't have to restart anything. One thing I just love about Godot is that everything is Git version control friendly. So if I just pop open a terminal here, I've cd'd into the project directory. I can say git init, and it establishes a new git repository, and then git status. And then see just here, everything that Godot does is stored in text. So you can just add it all, commit it, and then pull it down on a different computer if you're working with someone else, and it just works. It's awesome. So this is the end of my first video about Godot. Obviously, we just scratched the surface here. Um, I, I do plan to do more videos on Godot. Uh, we have a lot more to cover as far as collisions and enemies and pause menus and gameplay, all kinds of great stuff coming up. Um, if there's a specific topic you want me to cover, please let us know in the comments below and I'll be sure to include whatever in the next video. If you learned something today, I super appreciate you hitting that like button. And like I said before, if you like these kinds of videos, please be sure to subscribe. If you ever want to hang out and talk about game dev, we have a pretty active Discord server. A link to that is below. You're definitely welcome to come in and uh, tell us about projects you want to make or are currently making. We'd love to hear about them. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you had a good time. I know I did. I'll see you in the next video.